Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show. Thank you for joining us. Um, today, we're going to be speaking with Lee. Um, she is 62 years old. She refers to herself as an Air Force brat, lived in the Philippines, Germany, and all over the US. Um, Lee is the oldest of four. She has a college degree in interdisciplinary studies and has been in management for most of her adult life. In February of 2017, Lee was diagnosed with Parkinson's. So we're gonna be speaking with her today about that moment when, the diag when she was diagnosed, um, also uh, her journey since then, and the relief that she's found uh, through CBD. Hi, Lee, welcome. Hi, how are you? Doing great. Uh, we're very excited to have you on the show. Uh, thank you for speaking with us in hopes to share your story um, and, and, and possibly help bring relief to uh, others in the community experiencing the same thing. My pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about um, life before February of 2017. Um, what, what were you doing? What was your daily activities and how did that all change, um, after the stage, stage one of Parkinson's coming into play? Um, well, I was living my life, you know, I was working, um, in retail management. The, the thing was, is when I didn't put it together, I was falling a lot. And it wasn't until I had taken a bad fall and called to cancel plans with friends. And one of my friends pointed out that um, I'd been falling a lot. And maybe I should really think about looking at how often I was falling. I mean, I fell getting out of my car. I fell getting out of my bed. I fell walking down the street. So I made an appointment with my doctor and about the same time I was beginning to see a little bit of tremors in my right hand. They were mild, not a lot. Um, and then he ran me through a few little things and said I needed to see a neurologist. And I went to a neurologist um, and proceeded to have a series of tests there and finally received the diagnosis of early onset Parkinson's, which was not something I thought I was going to hear. It was, um, it took a while to really kind of absorb it. Um, with it came a lot of anxiety. I literally stopped getting a decent night's sleep. And of course I did what they tell you not to do. I went on the computer and <laughs> I Googled Parkinson's and came up with all the things you shouldn't be seeing or reading about. Um, so after about a year of, um, you know, in and out of, of anxiety and not getting the results I wanted. My tremors were improving. I took a very bad fall at my job and ended up breaking a shoulder. And there just needed to be something else. And I began then looking for that. And that's how I stumbled upon CBD. And I then began looking for a company that I thought it was kind of hard. There was so much out there and so little actual information about product. So it took a while to find something that I felt safe with and comfortable with. Um, the first day I took CBD, it was just 10 milligrams, but it was actually the first night I had gotten a decent night's sleep and I did not know how long. That was the first thing. Um, it did take me a little bit, about three weeks, maybe even four, to figure out where I really needed to be to check off 
the boxes that I wanted. You know, I wanted to be able to function. I wanted my tremors to be at bay. I wanted the pain to stop. I had started getting, um, I like to refer to them as, as, think of a Charlie horse on steroids. It's often called dystonia. Um, literally neurons misfire in muscle, causing them to contract and twist. It's extremely painful. It happens quickly. Not everybody gets it. Um, anybody with a neurological issue, it could be Parkinson's, ASL, MS, even a previous stroke patient or brain injury. Um, but if you get them, then you're probably going to have them the rest of your life. So finding something that could keep that at bay and keep the pain down was also massive for me. So that's actually how I, I began my journey with CBD. So that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> well, wow. It definitely, um, <laughs> You've definitely had the journey, and um, thank you for sharing that with us. So, You're so welcome. Now that you've uh, started to get some relief, it, you said the very first day you took CBD, you started with just 10 milligrams, and you had a decent night's sleep and the, the best in a while. Like, How long do you think it had been since you had really gotten a good night's rest? Oh, at least a year, not a little bit longer. I mean... I literally was functioning on two to four hours. If I fell asleep, uh, I would wake up, and then I'd be awake, and I couldn't go back to sleep, and it became a very vicious cycle. You start watching the clock, so to speak. You know, a lot goes in your head. You just don't shut your head off when I think it's true for any kind of um, major life-changing moment for people, regardless of what it is. Um, in my case, it was Parkinson's. I live by myself. So there was a lot to absorb and the anxiety level was probably through the roof. You know, you just don't, it, it, your mind doesn't stop. And that was one of the things the CBD did. It didn't, it wasn't that it made me sleepy or tired. It just simply seemed to allow me to turn my head off. And turning my head off was huge. Wow. That's awesome. Um, so, so after that first time that you took CBD and got the great night's mm -hmm. sleep for over a year um, and was able to calm those anxiety levels, um, you were speaking that after that it took a few weeks to really get um, some stable results. So let's talk about that period of time in there. Um, what, what were the few weeks like? Um, how did you administrate the product? And, uh, and what results did you end up getting in the, in the end? Um, I, you know, I did not really know initially, you know, other than, um, you always want to start small, I was told that, which does make sense because you certainly don't want to waste the product. Um, so I did that. I started with 10 milligrams. That was my first. And I did that for about maybe four or five days. And basically, I just sort of made a list of the things I was hoping to have happen, if that makes any sense. And I just sort of checked boxes off. And then I increased it a little bit and went from there. Um, and I learned as I went. You know, when I initially started, I had purchased a um, low bo a bottle of the, uh, the lowest milligram and quickly discovered that in order to even get the 10 milligrams I needed, it was going to be over a milliliter a day. So I, I learned that low dosage is not necessarily the milligrams if you want your bottle to last. So I ended up, I now, for, for example, I now do 
a thousand milligram bottle and I do about a quarter or a little over a quarter in the morning and a little over a quarter at night. And I use water soluble in the day. Um, it took me basically every four to five days, I would reevaluate and I'd increase slowly by a quarter. Um, and I just simply would check off bottles. And when I finally hit where it seemed that my tremors were at bay, um, my sleep had stayed really good. Uh, the pain level was good. I, I wasn't having to ice my legs or my arms down. Um, then I stopped. And basically, that put me at somewhere around between 40 and 60 milligrams a day, depending on the day. Um, but that's really about where I fall to have a functioning day for myself. Okay. So you said you had to, you used to have to ice your arms and legs? Yes, I did. I, um, if I, if I had a muscle spasm that was really bad. The only way to stop the pain was to um, ice. And I, I actually still have in my freezer, I have blocks of ice, literally blocks of ice. And that's what I would pack my legs or whatever in. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like you're trying, I like to believe that we're never given more than we can handle in our life. But boy, it can be challenging sometimes. Sure. Wow. Um, again, I've never experienced anything like this myself. So listening to your story is just, it's, it's more than just learning. It's um, really tuning my heart into what people go through um, and, and to to, to hear how within your first day of trying CBD, you got a good night's sleep after over a year and the, the strong anxiety started to subside. But to hear you would ice your arms and your legs and, and now you've gotten to a place where you're, you're not having to do that is, um, is awesome. It's just, uh, it's over the top. I'm very, very thankful that this industry is here and that we are um, hearing this and that the community is getting relief. Um, Lee, let's talk about uh, the now. So now that you're taking CBD regularly, uh, what are mm -hmm. your daily activities? Um, what what do you what do you do now that you have gotten these results and um, and have moved really past that that darker place? What what do you do on a daily basis? Um, well, I actually went to work for the company that produces the CBD I use. <laughs> uh, I believed in it enough to actually start working for them. So uh, I, my days are relatively good. I am on my feet most days. I get to help other people. I get to tell them a little bit about me um, and hope to give them help. I have a friend who has MS and she now uses the product and uh, and for her it's it's working and she started it because of me so I feel good about that um, I spend my day feeling a little bit better and I, I've learned a lot about I've begun to read my body a little bit better I have discovered I am my best advocate for me so I know when maybe I've overdone and maybe need to increase a little bit I've learned to read the signs um, but my quality of life has definitely improved considerably I get a decent night's sleep every night I might still wake up in the middle of the night but I'm, I'm able to go right back to sleep much to my cat's dismay because he counted on me being awake um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been good. It's been very good. So other than the 
um, the decent sleep, if you could just list a few things. Um, so sleep is one of them, going to work daily, 